From what I've heard, this particular series of StarCraft 2 is absolutely amazing. So I haven't seen the games yet. I'm very excited to find out. Game number one in this best of five, we find ourselves on the map at Dragon Scales. And spawning right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the blue Terran SCVs, we have none other than Clem. His opponent in the opposite corner, once again going for the Eric opener. That really does surprise me. Playing right here with the Red Zerg drones, we're looking inside of the main base of Cero. Really? Okay, so this is interesting to me because the established standard, right, for Zerg openers has been a 16 supply hatchery into an 18 supply gas geyser into a 17 supply spawning pool. Then Eric, I want to say a month and a half or so ago at this point, popularized, well, sort of popularized, the 15 supply extractor trick hatch first. And now apparently the very best Zerg in the world is consistently playing it, not only in the Zerg vs. Protoss matchup, but also in Zerg vs. Terran. Which really is interesting to me. So the main advantage of doing this build against Terran is the fact that you can get your Queens out by the time that the Reaper gets to your side of the map. Speaking of Reapers, Clem is very well known for his Reaper control, and I wonder if this is a stylistic change that Sarah has made specifically against Clem. I know basically all of the all of the top-level European Zergs, they really fear the very first Reaper that comes across. Oftentimes you'll lose at least two Zerglings. Clem just seems to be a little bit better at microing it than honestly anybody else out there, other than maybe maybe Bjorn. But I don't really see Bjorn getting a whole lot of damage. Alternatively, one of the moves that a lot of Zerks have been making at this level 2 against that very first Reaper of Clem is to go for 6 Zerklings rather than a conventional 4. So you have a little bit more to tank with early on. In this particular case though, Serral has gone for a group of Lynx. But I think with this opener, I think you sent them around. I think you try to hunt for that SCV that's building the command center on the low ground. Sometimes Terrans will get a little bit greedy. We have a double Rex opener this time around, so I don't think Clem is really going to take a whole lot of damage. But this might line up properly right here for the Zerg. Sometimes Terrans get a little bit greedy and they don't make a Marine before going for the add-on. And in this particular case, that has indeed happened as well. So maybe Serral can actually get some work done on the other side of the map. Here's that Queen popping nice and early. This is about 10, 12 seconds earlier than a conventional Queen with a standard opener. So it really does add up. Marines, yeah, are not going to be available yet. Okay. And this actually sucks right here for Clem. Not only is this now, well, dealing damage to the SCV and slowing down the command center, but it's also forcing that Reaper to come back home. And I think this Queen timing and the fact that your expansion can't really get blocked and the fact that you can get Zerklings across the map is exactly what makes the Eric opener very clever against Terran. But... Generally speaking, you know, whenever uh, whenever somebody comes up with a new build order or a new strategy, the pro gamers, especially the guys at the highest level, will be slow to adapt. They will usually give those strategies a try, but, you know, they've been playing the same build orders for literally like a decade at this point. It makes sense for them to feel less comfortable, especially when it's an important tournament match. Anyhow. That's a lot of talk for... You know, two Zerglings going down, and really in the grand scheme of things, not a whole lot of damage. Clem right here, going for a 2-1-1 opener. So that's two barracks, a one factory, and then one starport. Broadly speaking, we have two different varieties for Terran openers. Either it's a 2-1-1 with two barracks, or a 1-1-1 with a single barracks. Usually the second one is, uh, the 1-1-1 one -one -one that is, is gonna be a... Uh, a little bit more tech focused. This particular opener basically always leads towards a marine drop. The problem is that at this point, Serral hasn't seen it yet, so he doesn't really know what he's playing against. But what he has seen is, well, I guess what he hasn't seen is the lack of Hellions. So normally you do expect Hellions at this point in the game. Serral's already gone for a Roach Horn here, he's already gone for the Lair as well. So we have to see exactly when he decides to make arm. Usually this attack right here from Clem, it will hit right about. It's actually a follow-up right here with Hellbats as well, which is rather interesting. Okay, this is not just a standard 2-1-1. This is a, well, a 2-1-1 with Hellbats as well. So that's kind of cool. I think Roaches are going to be a prime choice though for Serral. But usually this attack, it'll hit at about the 5 minute and 10 second mark. Depending on how clean the Terran player has executed it and how, well, big the map is. Normally, you switch over the reactor to the starport and you pump out two of those medevacs. But in this particular case, it's going to be a single medevac but a bunch of Hellions here. Together with an armory, that's going to finish up momentarily. Okay, this does mean that the boys have to walk. Not enough room on the plane, but 
This can still definitely hit like a truck. Now, sadly, right here for Clem, it is going to be roaches. He was really hoping it was going to be zerklings only. A lot of zerk players will opt for that. But, yeah, the hellbats, I mean, they're still going to be helpful, but not as good as they would be playing against those links. Anyways, this is still catching the zerk player off guard. Look how crisp this timing was hit, by the way. He got here before 5 minutes and 10 seconds, so perfect execution right here from the Frenchman. And he's just jumping straight into the main. Now, this is a one-way trip for the majority of these units. There's just, you know, no Metavex available to pop them all in, but my god. Would you look at that. Even though the Hellbats, yeah, they weren't roasting links that they originally wanted to. They still ended up slowing down those roaches a lot, and obviously lings are much quicker than these slow roaches. Now Glyo Reconstitution is going to finish up, but this is a fantastic start right here for the Terran player. I actually thought the roaches were going to be a little bit better, but I like that Clem looked at it, and he's like, okay, I'm not even going to try and fight the army, I'm just going to stim and run by him, which is not sort of, it's not something we normally see from Terrans against Zerg. Usually, especially on creep, it's the Zerg player who's much quicker. But Clem, yep. I thought he was uh, gonna get shut down pretty hard right there, but clever execution right there by the Frenchman, and it, well, now allows him a massive advantage. Only, well, a couple of Hellions and a few Hellbats going down. Eight Marines in total as well. That's really not too bad at all. That being said, one of the downsides of a 2 one is that your third command center is late. And this one feels exceptionally late. Normally with an opener like this, it'll start up about two minutes ago. So I wasn't paying exactly or exact attention right there to what Clem's follow-up was gonna be, but he decided to go for a third barracks before going for the extra command center. So he's got another attack on the back of this too, but that does feel a little bit risky. The odds of him running into roaches with speed and then plus one, plus one this time around, they're going up. So Cero has basically redroned all the way up to full 3 base saturation. So 66 workers is the perfect amount for 3 base saturation. He's gone for a fourth hatchery. I believe that if Cero just holds down the roach button from here on out, well, at least until those upgrades are finishing, he's gonna be okay. Couple of drones over here. He's making drones right here because he wants to saturate the main base, but he's got two drones on idle. I'm not exactly sure what's happening there. Anyhow, here's the Terran army moving across once again. We do have the plus one infantry weapons about 80% of the way done. That's not going to finish, but I guess this may actually be a, uh, a lucky timing right here for the Terran, because at the same time, we have the Zerg also not finishing up his 1-1 just yet. No creeps right here on the high ground. I honestly wouldn't mind it if Serral decided to just give up this position. Okay, one. Okay, corrosive bile tries to connect. This hatchery is gonna fall. I don't think it's worth even trying to protect it. Yeah. Just remake the hatch over here or something along those lines, maybe even on the high ground. Fighting that army off creep is gonna be incredibly tough, especially without the upgrades. So I'm glad that Serral didn't run all of his units in there. Now the siege tanks though. Ooh, gunning against those clumped up units on the on the bridge here. Yeah, Clem is very scary though in these situations. He's very good at microing those marines and siege tanks and being in the right position at the right time. Cerro stubbornly once again making a move over here. This time around he wants to send a couple of the units across the bridge too. It is three siege tanks, one of them not sieged just yet, but I do believe that the finisher is going to be able to close the distance to those tanks eventually. And they're really the backbone of this Terran push. Clem just trying to salvage as much damage as possible right now, trying to hunt down that Ravager and that low HP Roach. But eventually, this will be pushed back and... Well, Cero keeps the fourth hatchery alive, but at the cost of a whole lot of Zerg units. Immediately though, this has triggered a counter-attack here as well from the finisher. How many tanks are available? It's just a single one right there on the high ground. Clem actually desperately making a bunch of Roaches at this... or Roaches? <laughs> Terran Roaches right over there. He's making a couple of Marauders. I think that's a great idea, actually, three at a time. Not a couple, okay. I know that some of you get very upset whenever I use the word couple to describe a pair of threes. Anyways, um, I guess a pair of threes would work. Anyways, you, you get what I'm trying to say. A few, a few marauders. Is that better? A handful of marauders. A sprinkle of mar No, I would say a sprinkle is less. Anyways, the Zork units are once again jumping on top of the marines and the marauders. But those medevacs, man, they're putting in so much work. Is this gonna deal enough damage here for the Zerg? So far, SCVs have been pulled away from their mineral line for just a little bit. Ah. I don't hate this attack here from Zerg, but I would have liked it a whole lot better. 
if we would have dealt more damage to the mineral line. Because at this point, sure, that was a lot of trading between the armies. A couple minutes ago, Serral was essentially like 50% economy up on his opponent, right? Before that third command center was done. At this point, the worker count is basically even. Sure, the fourth hatchery has finished up for the Zerg, but... Hmm. It doesn't have a whole lot of mining just yet. Now Link Speed, by the way, is gonna finish up, which is kind of ironic. Infestation Pit also come in here. Plus two, plus two, on the production tab for the Zerg. That's the main advantage, I would say, right here for our Zerg player. The fact that Terran is only at plus one and a single engineering bay upgrade here is, is gonna be big. So right now, Zerk is one upgrade ahead, but very soon he will be two upgrades ahead. And that is gonna make all the difference in these battles. That being said though, both players making a transition right now. So we do have Liberators coming up, we've got Drilling Claws coming up. Which is an interesting choice. Generally speaking against Roaches, we see Siege Tanks. Usually against Ling Bane based armies, we do see the, uh, the Widowmine transition instead. Apparently in this case though, I, I, I think maybe Clem is uh, smelling out a transition towards... Links and Banes, that's also sort of what he's forcing out though, with all of those, what did I call them? Roaches? Yeah, all of, <laughs> all of those Terran Roaches over here. Alright, Bailing Nest indeed, plus one melee, tunneling claws as well, that's gonna allow those Roaches to tunnel on the ground, and I think that's what these bad boys are waiting for right now, they're waiting for both of these upgrades to finish up. Yeah, Burrow is done, tunneling claws is gonna be a few seconds behind. Clem, is he gonna see this? Well, maybe when they move, but at this point, now they can start moving. At this point, it's incredibly hard to spot. Alright, there they go. Maybe. Maybe they will go eventually, okay? They're making the Imperial March over here. Da, 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 da. That's what they're singing. Da, 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 da. There's a, a hatchery over here as well, the fifth base location. He does pop... <laughs> uh, he does pop... Uh from the burrow right there to try and get a couple of siege tanks. I don't think that was perfect right there for the, the Zerg. Here's the Terran army coming back home as well. Yeah, the Imperial March not really uh, providing them the extra damage output that they were hoping for. In the meantime, Liberator in the main base apparently picking up a bunch of kills. Clem being an absolute nuisance. Alright. APM wise. This is where the, the story is being told. Look at that. Clem, 473 actions per minute. That is ludicrously fast. We do have a couple of fungals, though, and fungal growth can certainly change the tide of battle. I mean, we have energy for it, but Serral being very conservative. Trying his very best to not, well, pop those balls too early. Okay, there they go down. I don't think this is really gonna allow him all too much, though. And at this point, our Zerg player is falling down in the supply count. Fourth command center secured right here by Clem. Lovely work right here by the Frenchman once again. He's controlling the pace of this game so well. I think one of the reasons why we've been seeing uh, the top-level Zerks playing a lot of Road Ravager once again is specifically because Terrans are just uncomfortable against it. They've been playing against Ling Bane for a very long time, and I do believe that Ling Bane is better. But Roaches and Ravagers just play differently, and all of the timings that you're well aware of are very different. But Clem, I think he's figured it out. I would honestly be surprised if Serral decides to continue playing Road Ravager in this series, because so far, I mean, it's not like he really made any tremendous errors here, as far as I can tell. But so far, Clem has been shutting him down, easy peasy. Okay. That said, though, this game is not over yet. Sure, Serral ended up losing a base there. Sure, he doesn't have the greatest economy. But he does finish up the Bailing Speed upgrade. He is going into Vipers. He's getting himself the plus three upgrade as well. He's still looking solid as far as the upgrades go. That being said, though, at the same time, we do also have Clem going for the plus three, plus three here himself already. And I think he's ready to pull off, uh, yeah, another attack here. He's transitioning towards Ghosts, but since he's almost maxed out, he figures, you know what? May as well go uh, and trade a couple of my Marines and Marauders out so I have some more supply available to actually make Ghost with. <sighs> Unburrows Unburrows the Widowmine, but then the Marauder is caught in the splash. Anyways, this hatchery is certainly not going to happen. At the same time, we have a little push over here on the left side of the map. Those units do also get picked up. Apparently, Clemdo is thinking about moving in a little bit further. There's a parasitic bomb. 
excellent split right there as well by the Terran player, making sure he doesn't take a lot of splash damage. Widow Mind split though, amazing, my god! You see that? Sero actually ran those Zerklings that were targeted into the Widow Mines. Or sorry, in, uh, the, the Widow Mine uh, splash damage right there into the Metavex, which is a really cute little move. At the same time, we do have a Metavex drop over here in the bottom left. Eventually, this one will get shut down, but not without taking out a bunch of drones. Ooh, a bunch. That's another option. A bunch, a few, a couple, a handful, a batch. There's probably about 100 words in English for describing a small amount. This is looking rough right here for Serral, honestly. Very impressed by Clem. Yeah, we all know that Clem is very good, especially in the Terran versus Zerg matchup. He's always looked fantastic. But we've also seen a bunch of Serral games over the last few months, and Serral is looking absolutely unstoppable right now. His Zerg versus Protoss and Zerg versus Terran in, in, just insane, just so incredibly good. But Clem showing us that he is more than capable of going toe to toe. Once again, he's on the offensive. Now he's improving his unit composition quite a bit with those ghosts. Widow Mind still being annoying. A lot of the Metavex, though, are running low on HP, so. Another Parasitic Bomb would be incredible. Maybe a couple of Bowls connecting and maybe half of those Metavex going down? That could very well be the room that Serral desperately needs. In the meantime, though, if you look at the minimap right there, we have Terran taking two more bases. The expansion in the top right, fully secured. Expansion here on the left side of the map, also completely secured. Okay, well, yeah, you see those Widow Mines dealing a lot more friendly fire there? Ho <laughs> ho Then they deal damage to the Zerg. I mean, they killed a couple of links as well. But they certainly uh, betrayed the Terran Dominion there. Six kills? Yeah. Five of those were Metavex, I'm pretty sure. Alright, Planetary Fortress is gonna finish up. There is a Zerkling here, but it does not matter. Clem, out Zerging the Zerg. Serral is making a transition towards Ultras, which I would kind of like. If it wasn't for the fact that we already have seven ghosts out. Yeah, when you're making Ultras into somebody who's already got a, a whole lot of ghosts, life's very tricky. Look at the creep spread as well. The tempo advantage here that Clem has been creating for himself is, uh, is incredible. Not really allowing his opponent a lot of room to breathe, constantly hitting him where he's not, or the very least trying to pull his attention into multiple areas at once. The real fight is happening right here on the left side of the map, though. We have a fungal growth, we have a parasitic bomb, we have both metavex there going down. Clem backing off to the safety of the planetary fortress, though, which is smart. We have another uh, fungal growth, or maybe even a neural parasite available here, too. Good EMP, though. Shuts down that infester, even though it was still on the ground. He had detection because of the missile turret. Serral simply has run out of units, and he's forced to tap out in game number one. Alrighty. Next up, we find ourselves on Gresven. I've decided to fast forward through the first couple of minutes of the game. This time around, Serral has not gone for the Eric opener. Just a standard hatchery into a gas geyser, into a spawning pool. I don't really know as to why that is. I guess it's a map-specific thing? Third command center already. Okay. So our Clem has gone for a single barracks into two additional command centers, which is incredibly greedy. Then again, though, this is a, a very standard map. Most of the games we see on this map are what we consider to be very standard, so I don't think we should expect a lot of early game cheese right here from Serral. And honestly, sometimes when you go up against a Terran who's gone for such a quick third command center, their economy is much better than you actually imagine it is as a Zerg player. So I've played against these builds myself quite a bit, and then you think, okay, I've killed 20 SCVs with my Roach Push, amazing. But then they, you know, drop a couple mules from the high heavens, and you overestimate your advantage, and you then lose the game. This has happened so many times to me. So. Even though this is a very greedy opener, technically a very risky opener, I think it's safer than you probably imagine it is. Even though he literally made a third command center off of, like, one Reaper. <laughs> yeah, no, may maybe a little bit too greedy, though. Maybe a little bit much. But hey, in this particular game, Serral doesn't seem to be going for any sort of aggression. He did finish Metabolic Boost, and he's actually gonna go after some links here on the other s or a couple of SCVs here. On the other side of the map with his Zerklings, he now scouts what he's playing against. So it's once again a 2-1-1, but this time around with a much quicker um, third command center. So in the previous game, we didn't have a third CC until like, what, six, six and a half minutes into the game? 
Well, this time around, it's already finishing up by the four minute mark. The orbital comment, that is, which is going to be a massive economy boost. I'm assuming here, Sarah is not going to go for any aggression. Instead, he's just going to hold down the drone button. I honestly think that's what you need to do. A couple of links maybe here to just make sure you don't lose to anything silly, but you really want to make sure you outwork the opponent right now. Because you know Terran's going to be mining with three mules at once. You know that they're going to be producing three SCVs at once as well. You need to make sure you power out that economy faster. But not, you know, so quick that you end up with no units against the Marine push that will undoubtedly come on the back of this right here for Klim. Okay. So this time around, we will see the switch with the starport. Straight tech lab there as well. Okay. Ooh, a little bit of a supply block. Okay. That's a small mistake right there from Klim. Yeah, that does mean he's going to have one Marine less with this particular attack. As long as the Metavex are coming out, though, I think it should be okay. It's going to be a 15 Marine drop. Not by design, but on accident. Since Cyril saw this coming from a mile away, though, he should know exactly when to make army. He's now also going to see the Terran army moving forward. Look at the commanding officer right there. The man with the most experience in the Terran Dominion right now. Ooh, that sucks. I was wondering if that Overlord was properly positioned. I guess it would have fallen anyways, but... Okay, let's see. How clean is the defense going to be here for Serral? So he's got 14 links, which is not enough. Nope, he doesn't have enough links yet. Good transfusions over there, though. He's making links here at the last possible moment. And as a matter of fact, he's droning on the back of this. Greedy boy, Serral here. He's making drones for another base. Okay. You know what? I actually thought he didn't have enough links here, but I, I believe he's got the perfect amount. He saved up transfusions on the queens. So notice that a bunch of those queens have energy. I wasn't paying attention right there to the positioning of the high energy queens, but if I were to make a guess, they're probably in the back to make sure that they had transfusion available for their, uh, their sisters in the front. Okay. Clem going straight into the 1-1 one -one upgrades, going straight into the additional marine production. Very cool. This time around, different unit comp entirely for Serral. No roaches, none of that. Okay, loses one queen over here, but a lot of marines have already fallen too. <laughs> I could have sworn more of them went down than just a single one, okay? Normally I autopilot into such sentences, and I sound pretty smart. Um, not this time. Not this time. Anyways, Banelink Speed is gonna finish up here momentarily. We've got a couple Banelinks. Got a group of Zerklings on the other side of the map too, and these bad boys, yep, they're gonna definitely turn into Banes. And they're gonna try and roll their way into this mineral line. I'm assuming Clem has, well, crossed his T's and dotted his I's, and... I don't think he's really gonna be taking a whole lot of damage from a small group of Banes like that, but it's a little skill check, right? Serral's economy is solid enough where he can actually throw away a bunch of uh, Banelings here for free. I mean, the Supply Depot alone is gonna be enough. Siege tank is going to be a nice bonus, though. Excellent creep spread here by Serral. Maybe this hatchery is going to be in some trouble, though. Yeah, he's just going to straight up cancel it. But then again, this hatchery... It's important in the long run, but not the most important thing at this point in time. A little push over here. Yeah, if you're only bringing Zerklings to this party, Clem will stick around for a little bit longer. If there were a couple of Banelinks mixed in, he would have picked up a bit faster. Push over here as well. Clem dropping behind the mineral lines, stuffing units in between the mineral fields. And he's winning the fights on both ends, I would say. At the very least, uh, the traits are very efficient. He's mainly still camping out here, by the way. Yeah, there's no way they're gonna be able to get anything done. Maybe they can catch an SCV transfer down south or something in like five minutes from now, but... Uh, I don't think they're gonna achieve that much. Clem is looking dangerously good here. Yeah, with most Terrans, at some point they'll make a mistake and they accidentally have a bunch of Banelings connect, you know, in the middle of their, their Marine Clump. But, yes, Clem so far, not with any problems. I mean, he even now sees three of the Banelings on the radar, so I was like, yep, oh, sorry, excuse me. Bringing them back home. Not even really gonna test it. I would not have been able to withstand the temptation right there to still roll those Banelings in, even though I knew that it wouldn't really be able to do any damage. Widow Mine Drop, though, coming across the map right now as well. 
Okay, we had a little bit of an attempt to drop over here too. I mean, Clem has been dropping back and forth for ages now. Good with a mind connection over there. Sarah maybe mentally starting to uh, slow down a little bit here. You really can't afford that in a series like this, though. Look at this man, though. So Clem literally just... He pressed the attack button at about the 4 minute mark and he's been going ever since. Literally not letting his foot off the gas. Sarah has been deflecting all of it quite comfortably so far. But definitely not without mistake. Here's that really big attack coming in. He's got a lot of money in the bank right now, Serral that is. I think he wants to go for Lurkers here eventually, but they're not gonna be done yet. Widowmines, treacherous as always, trying to get some work in. Widowmine over here. Uh, at the very least, it's attempted. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna try and drop it into the natural. That wasn't the original target, but it's still gonna be pretty darn good. I don't think this first one is gonna be able to get much done. Widowmine over here also trying to help out. Accidental swarm host coming up. Widow Mines over here in the middle of the map are gonna get cleaned up eventually, and Serral... Okay, thought he was gonna maybe retarget to the low HP Medivac. Not the case. Medivac drop over here as well. Medivac's in the middle of the map flying around again. Widow Mines in the top left and corner. This man is everywhere. But Serral has deflected it. Yeah. And he's ready to transition right here towards... Um, lurkers. And Lurkers are amazing at stopping these tempo pushes. Now one thing that usually, <laughs> one thing, that's a, that's a misclick, there's no way. Uh, one thing that usually starts uh, slacking here for the Zerg is the creep spread. You can see that that is sort of the case here as well for Saro. When you keep up the pressure, wait, did that Widow mine? Hold up, what just killed 14 drones? Uh, we had a couple of workers going down over here, was it, was it that Widow mine in the end? That killed 11 more? Yeah, this one actually managed to refire. Fair enough. That's 10 drones going down, and I think this one over here. Okay. Yep, it also went in. Clem, man. Clem has to be one of the worst opponents to play against. And with worst, I mean one of the very best. This man is everywhere. Incredible gameplay right here from Clem. I know that there's a couple of Terran players watching this right now and they feel inspired. They will go onto the ladder and they will give this style a try. And with the third meta effect that they get out, they will lose everything. <laughs> I, I love it though, whenever games inspire people to uh, give it a try themselves. You're like, hold my beer, I got this! And then you play the game and you realize, nope, I don't! <laughs> Uh, hugging Bailing's not my favorite pastime activity, but he picks up and gets them out of there anyways. Liberator's right now in the mix as well, but Queen's still with plenty of transfusion energy. That hatchery apparently mispositioned. In the meantime, Clem has got himself a fifth command center coming up. And he's going for three more command centers over here in the middle of the map too. Okay, I was talking about lurkers. When you burrow the lurkers in good locations... You can oftentimes shut down these Terran attacks. I think burrowing them over here, excellent plan. You can shut down the push over here, but also the push over here. At least a little bit, right? Maybe a little closer to the right side would not be bad. But anyways, he's got to be okay. Ooh, very quick splits over there. Ghosts are coming out now. Clem's master plan is only partially complete. It's like, you know what? Those two Widow Mines from earlier in that meta vec, they did really well. Let me do a little bit more of that. Lurkers are getting the upgrades now. So... Seismic Spines is done. They're gonna get the Burrow Improvement upgrade here as well in just a moment. Zorklings are finishing up their Adrenal Glands, but in the meantime... Yeah, Terran's getting 3-3. Three, three. It was a little late on the plus 3 armor. Group of Changelings trying to scout out the right side of the map. This is the worst feeling as a Zerg when you see... Oh, no. I was hoping that this base wasn't taken yet, but he's already flying one over there. Well, he definitely has got that base. In the meantime, the expansion that's mirrored on the other side of the map, okay, takes a lot of damage, but also costs a lot of Marines, and the hatchery still lives. The accidental swarm host from earlier is zero confirmed kills. Poor guy. At the very least, he's got Locust. Adrenal Glance, pretty good, eh? Five Dropper Lords coming up. Fusion Core coming up. More Command Centers. 
Well, coming up as well. We're gonna go all the way up to uh, about a dozen, okay? A dozen orbital comments is what we're looking for here. Lurker drop in the main base. I think that's the plan. Normally it's a Nidus worm that does the trick. At this point, Clem sees this coming in though, and it's incredibly nice. Oh, <laughs> good trade right there for the uh, for the Terran player. That's for sure. He saw the Overlords, for sure. He had vision of it, 100%. There are a couple of missile turrets. You'd imagine Zorklings at this point, but no, it's gonna be Lurkers. Okay, that is gonna be quite annoying. At the same time, we do have a drop over here. But I think those Ghosts, they should probably be home. Looks like a Medivac ended up taking a lot of damage. Maybe one of them has gone down. This is so tricky to break. Yeah, the problem is that these Lurkers, they deal so much damage if you don't pay attention. Honestly, clean execution here so far by Klim. The problem is, while this is happening, the Zerk is pushing at the third base as well. And this is the first time that Serral manages to strike back in this game. 24 SCVs have gone down. Even though maybe technically the Lurker exchange over there in the main base wasn't the most cost efficient, it's very APM efficient, right? So it takes the Terran about 100 actions to deal with. And for Zerk, I mean, maybe 20 to execute. Uh, honestly, that's kind of how these guys are thinking at this point, right? They aren't really necessarily too focused on mineral exchanges and how efficient their armies are, but APM efficiency is definitely something to consider, because that's one of the very few limiting resources at this level of play, even though they're still, you know, pressing what, like, like nine buttons a second on average in this game so far, it's, yeah, it's pretty ludicrous. No neural parasite yet, but we do have an infester following around the bio army. We have a changeling following around the bio army too! Beautiful move right there by Serral. Parasitic bomb on the back of it too. Credit where credit is due though. Clem splitting that off very rapidly and now actually doing a phenomenal job splitting against this army as well. Looks like the push over here in the bottom left hand corner got the knight. Clem still with the supply lead. 92 SCVs or sorry, Zerk SCVs. These bad boys right over here. Available right now for Serral. Considering the amount of mining he's doing in this game, he doesn't actually have a lot of mining. So he's got 92 workers, but only a handful of minerals. That's honestly the main reason why he's making infestors. It's not like he thought, okay, infestors are the best unit here. He just, yeah, has no minerals, so he had to make a choice. Now, I don't think there's a lot of Zork players though, that complain about making a bunch of infestors against Terran, because they're really good, assuming you can control them. Here comes Clem once again. Sure, he may have just killed 24, 20, yeah, 26 SUVs in total in this game. But Clem has got a lot of orbitals. So he can drop mules left, right, and center and replenish his economy just fine. Couple of drones just auto attacking over here. We've got advanced ballistics coming up. That's the Liberator ranged upgrade, which is amazing. Those Liberators are not just very powerful, but they're also very difficult to deal with with these sort of armies from the Zerg. He doesn't have. Corruptors, he does, well, maybe you have a couple of Vipers still, yeah, he's got one still available, but... Again, a very APM efficient choice here for Klim. You can rapid fire the anti-ground mode and they set up pretty quickly. The extra range makes them very difficult to pick off. This is a relatively recent addition, actually, for the late game TVZ. Obviously, Liberators have always been good, but it's been incredibly Ghost-focused over the last couple of months. A lot of bio uh, into Terran mech with ghosts as well, right? A lot of ghost mech, but in this case, I mean, it's sort of like ghost mech, I suppose, but it's still very bio focused too. And he's using the liberators here to improve his army rather than like hell bats and Thors and siege tanks and all the rest of it. So this does allow a lot more mobility. Good moves right there once again by the Terran, who's ready to make this a full split map game. This is going to be a long series, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hatchery taken before the command center can land. Now, I feel like the command center should be able to land there and use it as like a little trampoline. Somebody please make an animation. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. That would be really fun. I would love to see that. Instead, I think we may very well just kill it and then, you know, land the command center on top of it here momentarily. Once again, another fungal growth. Please tweet me the animation at LocoTV. Thank you very much. I would love to see that. There's probably somebody that will make that. That'd be so funny. Anyways, Nidus Network coming up right now. So Cero may still be thinking about moving in. We've seen him do some counter attacks from this position over here and then, you know, go with lurkers up or, for example, down. Hatchery does fall. 
Clem needs to wait until some of the creep disappears. Baneling landmines over here as well. Trying to be annoying. Not quite the case though. Not really connecting with anything just yet. We do have a Nidus Worm going up inside of the main base. Banelings do indeed explode there eventually. But Clem is now, well, securing the high ground right next to one of the Zerg bases. In the meantime, Lurker's in the main base once again. Terran's gonna have to send a couple more units over in this direction. Zorkling's also added in the mix. Love to see that. Scans over there to review all of this. He's gonna save at least a few of them. Liberator here in the bottom left corner as well. Man, these guys are insanely good. These guys are so freaking good. It's it's honestly hard for me to stay on top of everything. Like, I'm casting this game mostly from the minimap, okay? I'm casting this game from the minimap primarily here because I'm trying to stay on top of everything. But seriously, though, these guys, they are everywhere. Even though I have perfect vision and these guys have very limited amounts, they're still all over the place and they're still trying to outpace the opponent. Okay, Command Center actually gonna go down. I really thought that the Zerk was gonna fight against the Terran with a Planetary on the high ground. Saral really needed to break that because it's one of the most difficult uh, positions to get rid of. But look at the Liberator Clump. 11 lips are now available. Another Night is Worm in the main base. Zorklings and Lurkers once again. The main tool right here for the Zork to push this. Very lovely work. Um, Saral's gonna need something to counter all of those... All of those libs. Hydras aren't gonna cut it. I don't think so. There's about as many Hydras right now as there are Liberators. Now, he's seen a lot of Liberators, but maybe he doesn't quite realize how many there actually are. Well, now he must see that there are quite a few. Look at them getting so much value. Okay, Abductions here are amazing. Ghost also. No, that was a Zorkling, I think? That was pulled across. Yeah, he really wants to make sure that that expansion on the high ground does not happen. This is one of the most difficult expansions to break. At the same time, Sarah, by the way, taking another base here on the other side of the map. This is kind of cheeky, so Clem's attention is up north. So Sarah's like, don't mind if I do. You can maybe mine that base. Maybe I'm okay with that. Assuming I can mine one that is usually considered to be yours. That still means that Sarah would have a full extra base worth of mining. Okay, I'm surprised that Hydras are actually doing this well. I'm a little afraid, though, that in, like, a, a big fight, if, like, all the armies meet, maybe that's what Serral's trying to avoid. But I've got a feeling that Liberators are gonna shine in those engagements. Once again, though, Serral just creating chaos everywhere. Look at the Liberators! <laughs> We're playing Whack-A-Mole, or whack a in the main base here. <laughs> Get your hammers out. <laughs> actually insane, though. I think Clem is very annoyed by the, uh, the Nidus Worms in the main base. That's where all of his production is at, of course. Alright, he's trying again. Planetary Fortress coming up on the high ground. Zerg units going around the side. He wants to get a fungal growth, but I love that... Uh... Oh, there it is! I love that attempt at Neural Parasite. Is there enough, though, for the Zerg to actually fall back? Or, or push back, rather? I don't think so. Yeah, Parasitic Bomb deals a lot of damage. Maybe the Libs will go down. Both of them will indeed fall. But I think not only will this expansion fall on this end of the map, we also have the high ground secured. Ish. Sort of. Better than before, anyways. Here's the Terran army. Moving down south. Clem realized, okay. You seem to be giving me a little bit more headway over there. That must mean you've got that base taken on the bottom. And Clem, yeah, with this uh, last few minutes of exchanges, finds himself in a really good spot. One of the problems you run into here, yeah, you've got a lot of mules. Yeah, you can mine a lot of money. But you also run out of your mineral, re mineral fields really quickly because the mules mine so much. You need more. And that's exactly what Clem just secured. Cyril still has money in the bank. He's still maxed out. But these positions are really difficult for Deserve. I don't think this is going to be enough right here for Saral. Yeah, not this fight, anyways. He needs more of a backbone. So, losing this expansion would really suck, though, for Saral, because this is one of his last mining bases. He's going to give up on it. These bases here are, yeah, they're, they're going to run low in the next few minutes. Clev. You absolute legend. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> 
As soon as I give him a big compliment. He's like, oh yeah, Loco gave me a... And I lose all the Marines. I don't think I have that level of power. No. Plus, I'd be very impressed if you could hear me talk about him in the future. These games, I think they were played... As of me casting this about six days ago. Uh, easily the highest level of StarCraft 2 I've seen this month. Series of the year, anybody? I haven't titled a game of the year video in uh, at least a month. I've done about four games of the year this year so far. Um, series of the year? Genuinely though, um, if it's not this series of Clem vs. Serral, that's gonna be series of the year. It's probably whichever one they're gonna be playing next month. I, I mean, th these guys are on another level. Clem online is just incredible to watch. I mean, he's very good offline too, but... The very quick movement. Now look at this Lurker push over here though. The Lurker's actually just killed that command center. That's actually really nice. My main concern here is the amount of money still left in the bank for Serral. Again, not his real life bank. I'm sure that one's doing just fine. Although I heard income tax in Finland is, is, is brutal. Um, that being said though, I, uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned for his mineral and gas situation. Okay, big fungal growth over here that I just missed apparently. Sorry, that's my bad. Parasitic bombs everywhere too. Clem somehow picked all of those. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this is such a- I'm gonna back up. This is an exchange of, of so many high level moves. So Clem definitely gets caught with his pants down, right? So we're about 20 seconds back in this replay. So we have some abductions happening here. Okay, fair enough. You could probably execute that. I could probably execute that. Fair enough. We have some snipes on drones just to rub salt in the wound. Fair enough. But here comes the night or the night is the fungal. Fungal growth on all of the metavex. Parasitic bombs on the back it is too. Clem somehow, some way splits the two metavex out of the <laughs> out of the bunch. Another infester on burrows. EMP on the infester. Eventually, those metavex will end up going down. Clem takes a tremendous amount of damage. But in the meantime, he's dealing damage on the other side of the map, too. I'm casting this whole series with a big smile now. This is sick. I've seen a lot of amazing games of StarCraft 2 over the last couple of weeks, but... Oh, there's a Christmas to this series. Clem finds himself with a 2-0 lead over Serral. Next up, Ancient Cistern. Match point right here for Clem. I don't think we're gonna see a lot of variety coming out of Klim. As far as this series go, I or as far as the series goes, I, I don't think he's gonna be doing anything crazy. Maybe some early game shenanigans, right? Maybe a couple of Hellbats or a Marauder push or something like that. But I think most of his mid game will be focused on just Marines, a whole lot of Metavex, Widow Mines, Siege Tanks, eventually into Ghosts and then the Liberators and all the rest of it. Likewise, I don't think Serro is likely to go for a lot of early game aggression himself either. Yeah, Clem hasn't really shown us any sort of uh, Benshi play. So Benshi's, yeah, or Lecter off, I guess, does mean that the Terran can be somewhat vulnerable. But I think this time around we are gonna go for a classical 1-1-1. One, one, one. So this is the build order that Clem honestly popularized. It's not a build he came up with, I don't think, but he was the one playing this in basically every single one of his games. So you go for a third command center after the factory. You go for a single Reaper out of the barracks, then into a single Marine to make sure that any links that sneak across the map can't slow down your expansion. Then you make a reactor, switch over the reactor when it finishes to the factory, and then the, uh, the barracks goes on to make a tech lap over here. And you make that for the starport, of course, and you pump out a bench here or two. This is a super safe opener where you're basically saying, okay, I am gonna go for a big eco myself. I'm gonna go for a lot of uh, a lot of mining. And at the same time, if I micro everything correctly, I should not really be taking any critical amounts of damage. Now there are builds that counter this specific style from Terran, but the problem for Zerk is that you have to go for a commitment to counter this specific style before Terran commits to this specific style. So you'd have to know that they're gonna be executing it, and I think that's one of the reasons why Clem is not doing this in every single one of his games anymore, because sometimes she can be caught off guard. Serral sees the lack of the green, well, light over there inside of the tech lab. 
He wants to see what's gonna pop out of this, uh, this starport, but I don't think he will. Okay, it's a single Banshee. That's it? That's it. Just a single Banshee, no cloaking. Interesting. We'll have to see exactly what the follow-up is gonna be right now for Mr. Klim. Now, I think against a single Banshee opener, a Roach Push could still work. But anyways, none of that is happening. Saro going for a lair right now. I think he's going to be following this up with a Bailing Nest. Okay, very soon. And this is him playing a safe opener too. Basically the same build that he played in the previous game. Quick Bailing Speed. Followed up with 1-1 one, one upgrades. The Zerg bread and butter in this matchup too. It's one of those, I don't want to die to anything silly openers. Although, again, there are some builds that this is vulnerable against. Most notably, for example, a Hellbat push. So, for example, if Clem would be going for the same attack as he did in game number one, this build right here could be a bit troubling. But I don't think it will be. Nope, both players going for what we consider to be the most standard game in this matchup right now. With a couple of small deviations, but honestly, this is all... This is, uh, yeah, a, a very normal, normal way to play this matchup. Bailing Speed should start up. There we go. Terran going 1-1 one, one upgrades. Also all alright. Now, I favor Serral in these situations against everybody. That's a lot of Hellions, by the way. That's more Hellions than we normally see. Oh, I've seen this little clip. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, I have seen this in a clip on the StarCraft 2 subreddit. I didn't realize it was from this particular series. Look at the defense. I'm gonna rewind here in just a moment. So the main thing that Clem has done differently in this game compared to like a complete normal game is the lack... <sighs> that was so beautiful. Um, the, the lack of cloaking, I guess, and that the fact that he made more than like eight Hellions. I'm gonna back off. About 20 seconds. Look at this. Look at the defense right here, in particular from Serral. So Serral here has got 9 Queens, he's got 20 Zerklings, but he doesn't have enough to counter 12 Hellions and a Reaper. So look at the patience. He runs the drones to the main base, he runs the Queen from the main base to the middle of the ramp, and she's on hold position. And then he does not run down the Zerklings. Instead, he tries to keep this Queen around, Good grenade right there as well by Klemdo, trying his very best to push that queen out of position. And Serral basically defends 12 Hellions and a Reaper, even though he wasn't really quite prepared for it. Even transfuses a bunch of drones without losing a single one. One of the most beautiful defenses against a Hellion run by I've ever seen. Gorgeous. Yeah, just be better, guys. Just, just play better. Come on, it's so obvious when you see these guys doing it. When you know the outcome, you're like, yep, this is what I could have done. At least that's the feeling I usually get whenever I look at that. I'm like, oh yeah, I could do that. I could definitely do that. And then, you know, every game I see like six Hellions, I lose half my mineral line. I'm like, okay, that was half the Hellions that, you know, Clem threw to the opponent's side of the map. Anyhow, the Hellions, they were annoying. They were a stepping stone. But they're not really that critical in this game. It does, of course, put Clem on the back foot. Mostly because, uh, yeah, you now need to leave some units here for the defense. Or at least, you know, look at Serral here, scouting out. Normally there'd be Hellions over there, or maybe with his main army here. It shuts down the tempo lead a little bit, right? So Clem very much so relies on that tempo advantage where he's constantly pushing, making sure that Zerg forgets about the creep threat, trying to hit his opponent in seven different angles at once, and the Hellions usually are one of the angles. Or they're, you know, transformed into Hellbats sitting in a mineral line at home. Another little Bailing squad setting itself up. We have the Burrow upgrade coming up here for Saro as well. I think he's planning on burrowing Lynx and all the future expansions from the Terran. Lovely little siege tank spot over there, of course. Clem trying to create a chokehold on this base. Benshi not in the right position, now even going across. Although Serral is actually once again sending them... Hmm. He's probably making the assumption that the opponent has... Maybe, maybe this is him autopiloting, man. Maybe he accidentally autopilots five links towards the other side of the map every game. And then he sends them back home because he realizes, nah, this is actually Clem. I probably won't get any damage done, so I'm not even going to throw them away. Anyways, if there is a game where he's got some wiggle room to go ahead and throw away five banes, I think this would be the one. 
Low risk, high reward potential, that's for sure. But I guess in Serral's mind is low risk, low reward, so it's not worth. Widowmine's over there, love that. Widowmine's burrowed right next to the siege tank. Okay, Terran does catch a couple of those links and banes, but in, the <laughs> in a way he just walked into that baneling army. Now we have that siege tank on the high ground, retargeting to the banelings as well. It's retargeting manually with a single siege tank. Look at him. He doesn't need to do that. But he can. Plus two, plus two, coming up for both players. Neither of them really skipping a beat as far as upgrades go. And there's certainly gonna be a small window right here for the Terran to deal a lot of damage, especially if he can keep pushing the creep back. This is for... The foreseeable future is, is line of attack. Siege tanks on the low ground would be amazing, but he's only got two of them, and I think he's probably gonna keep those at home for the base defense. Serral's going Hydras here into somebody who's making mari uh, <laughs> marines. He's making mines and marines. Now the main advantage of Hydras is that they outrange Widow Mines when they're burrowed, as long as you have detection, of course. As that Hydra so valiantly displayed. At least as soon as we have the Grooved Spines upgrade done, that's the additional range for the Hydralisks. Yeah, so we have Marauders coming up. We still have Widow Mines coming up, but the Widow Mines are definitely a little bit of a risk. Hive on the production tab right now for Serral. Serral's economy is looking good, but likewise, Clem also going for a full uh, landing strip right over there, man. Insane. He is going to be able to, Serral, that is, shut down quite a few of these Terra units off creep. And I think that's, once again, mostly just to try and make sure that the tempo advantage does not go in favor of the Terran. Planetary Fortress there. Good moment to fall back to, of course. We'll have to see exactly what he decides to do with the Hive. There's no Lurker then, or anything like that yet. I think the Lurkers are a good option when you're behind. I think when you're ahead, Ultras may very well be a better choice. And I think in this game, Serral probably considers this to be a small advantage, but he could also just go Vipers with Adrenal Glands or something like that. Good split against the Widow Mine. Concussive Shell's coming up, and now we have the additional Command Centers slowly building here for Klim. In the meantime, though, Serral going for a big transition here, where he's now fighting his opponent into multiple areas at once. This Planetary is dead as soon as the Banelings decide to engage. In the meantime, we do have a, uh, a push as well on the left side. 11 drones have already gone down too. That's due to a widow mine here at the 6 o'clock position. <laughs> Serral just wasted so much money killing a planetary and 14 SUVs. It's like, haha, got him now. And then Clem comes in with the widow mine drop, kills 11 drones, and nullifies most of that advantage that Zerk just took. Bailing mines over here as well. Boom. Lovely work. Bailing mines are good, but the main issue with bailing mines is that they... Oh, there you go. Okay. They can sometimes take a bit too much effort. So widow mines automatically fire, but bailing mines here have to manually explode. You can't set them to auto explode as well, but it's way too slow. So players at this level will be manually detonating them. But it's very easy to focus too much on the bailings and, you know, uh, hope for the grand execution. And then not actually get anything done. It's gonna be, uh, it is gonna be a Lurker Den, by the way, in the end. So I guess he just forgot about the Lurker Den, or maybe he just delayed it. Hoping he could win with just Marines, or... Zerklings, Banelings, and Hydras against those Marines. Good Widow Mine hit. Hatchery over here is gonna fall? Okay, Clem. These guys are so evenly matched, but I think Clem is a little bit better today. Outpacing the opponent. Very lovely work. We don't often see Serral running around putting out fires like he has been in this series so far. Normally it's a lot more rigid. He shuts it down and then you're behind. But Clem has been continuously putting on the pressure. Double expand right now from Serral as well. We don't have a ghost transition yet, which is my main concern right here for uh, for Clem. 
Yeah. He doesn't have any ghosts. And lurkers are coming up. There is... Okay, there's a ghost on the production tab, so that's nice. Would have liked to see that about maybe 30 to 60 seconds earlier. He's been maxed out for a while, so I think he probably could have made at least the Ghost Academy a bit sooner. A couple of the meta effects are starting to take some damage here, too. And this game does feel better for the Zerg compared to the previous one. Planetary Fortress here on the high ground, though. Is he gonna commit to killing it? It looks to me like he wants to commit to killing it. Parasitic Bomb, Blinding Cloud? No, we're gonna go double Parasitic Bomb on both of the groups of meta effects right there, and that's gonna be a lot of dead planes. Planetary Fortress also goes down, but luckily Clem does indeed survive with most of his SCVs, and he's gonna take a base here in the bottom right-hand corner as retaliation. Scan over here would be awesome, get rid of some of that creep spread once again. Zerk is trying to cycle army here, all the way from that previous engagement in the middle of the map. And by the time that those units appear, he decides to go back. Benchy over here in the bottom right-hand corner from the early game. 18 kills, by the way. He's gonna patrol here and, well, should be able to deny this base for quite a while. That is very annoying. I actually really like that. New Planetary Fortress coming up over here. 6 o'clock position and 12 o'clock position are usually quite straightforward on this map, but Clem has decided to go for the expansion in the middle first. Widow Mines here trying to detonate, and they once again deal more damage there to the Terran army than they do to the Zerg. Bailings once more hunting for that mineral line, trying to kill as many of those SCVs as possible. They're gonna settle for the command center, but Clem is coming in with an army from the left as well. And he's gonna shut most of this down. Luckily for the Zerg, most of the units do live. Bailing rollby over here, retargeting with the planetary fortress on as many of those banes as possible. 19 SCVs. I think he is gonna be able to survive though with the CC itself. Where are the lurkers, man? We don't have any lurkers yet. This is certainly gonna... He's been poking the bear. This is certainly gonna force a retaliation from the Terran. Clem trying to start up that transition he did in the previous game towards both Liberators and Ghosts. But so far, it's been falling flat. Deep engagement off creep, though, here. And splitting against those Banelings is so much better when you're off creep. Clem doing an excellent job, trying to control the pacing, not just of the game, but also of the fights. Yep, once again, inviting his opponent off creep. Widowmind's dealing a lot of friendly fire, good splits right there on the Metavex. Ghost in the front, okay, getting nibbled away at, but he will survive for a little bit longer. Okay, now the Lurkers are coming. Now the Ghosts are coming. This is a long series, isn't it? Clem not in a good position this game, though. At least not compared to game one and two. He's by no means in an unwinnable spot. But if any other Terran player would be in his position right now, I would heavily be favoring Serral. Right now, I'm only, like, favoring Serral maybe 65%. Those Widow Mines, man. Yeah, those Widow Mines are... They're killing Zerg units, too, but serral has been controlling them really well. Okay, Clem is gonna go for an additional command center. I'm surprised he still hasn't attempted to take that base over there. Expansion in the bottom right coming up here as well for the Zerg. Now we're gonna morph, uh, or move rather, Lurkers into this spot. Okay, we do have some really good snipes. Lovely work right there by the Terran player. He's gotta be careful though. Stimming units into, uh, into Lurkers is always dangerous, but he is gonna be able to shut this down. Command Center did disappear, but we have more Command Centers to replace the ones that were lost. Clem stims onto the high ground, gets rid of some of the creep spread. <laughs> These guys are so fast. Serral apparently decided to uh, speed up. Yeah, he's about 20 APM faster this game as he has been. Oh my god, that's a big one. Huge power bombs. He apparently needed to squeeze out another five actions per minute or so. Borrowed Zorkling here on the ground. I mean, this is beautiful. As far as uh, sports go, right? A lot of people will consider esports not to be a, a quote unquote a real sport. These guys, man, I don't know if you've ever seen them play in person, but they are burning calories like no tomorrow. This is a very physical game as well. I know it sounds silly. Because they're really just sitting there in their chairs. Moving around their, their their mouse and keyboard. But like, it is it is intense. 
Loads of SCVs are falling once again, though. Planetary Fortress has not finished up yet. We even have some abductions right there on Metavex. There's the GG. And Cyril had to fight for it, but he got a point on the board. Next up, Babylon. I was fast forwarding through the first minute of this game. I'm not very good at keeping secrets, guys. I'm sorry. I was fast forwarding through the first minute of this game, and then I realized, wait a second. He's doing it again, but this time around with a bit of a twist. I wasn't paying attention. I was just going to go straight to the two minute mark, follow around the Reaper for a little bit, begin my cast there. So this is an Eric opener. Fair enough. So 15 supply hatchery. But then I think straight into a spawning pool or something like that. So what exactly is the follow up right now going to be? So what Eric does is he makes another extractor over here. Okay, so this is a 14. This is a variation of the Eric. So 15 hatchery into an overlord into a 14 spawning pool. Is that what we're doing? Very interesting. Is he going to make any drones from the back of this? He will. So what I saw, right? What I saw on the production tab before I backed up to the very start of this replay. Was Cyril making a whole lot of slow zerklings. <laughs> he wasn't actually doing a... Okay, yeah. So we're droning all the way until about 17 workers. I guess one of these will become a gas geyser. No, we're going to just mine 17 out of 16. That's a little dirty. But anyways, so what he does right now is he saves up larva. Very interesting. Saving up larva. But on top of that, also saving up um, money here to be able to produce a bunch of queens. Oh, he's transferring two drones. I actually really like the fact that he transferred two drones. The main reason for the second drone transfer, even though it now puts him at 15 out of 16, is because this looks normal to Clem. So Clem is going to get across the map here with a Reaper very soon. He's going to see, oh yeah, there's two drones mining over here. If he even clicks the mineral fields, he's going to be like, yep, this is normal. Everything's A-OK. -okay. But in reality, Serral's made eight Zerklings that are now running across the map. And they're running in such a path, or on such a path, that Clem doesn't actually see it. So what Clem sees right now, A-OK, -okay. this looks like the Erica opener. Queens are gonna pop here in a second. There they are. Everything's normal. Is he gonna send that Reaper straight back home? He is. I think this is the right move. Yeah. Some really good strategic thinking right here by the finisher. He wants to kill this command center, doesn't he? Or like, what does he want to do? I, I think he could try and hit the command center itself if he really wants to, but... Yeah, yeah, that is the plan. Now, certainly here for Serral, he's gonna see that the Reaper came back. And I don't think that's what he was hoping for. Okay, good little bit of mineral walking right here by Clem. That is a few SCVs going down, but not enough to justify this opener from the Zerk. Lovely crisis management right there by the Frenchman. This is once again a triple CC opener here for Clem. Very quick third command center, otherwise maybe Hellions would have been an option too, but... Third hatchery is also gonna come up right here for Serral, but notice the timing right there of the third hatchery compared to the third command center. Taran's actually gonna finish the third significantly before the Zerg. And your creep spread does take a bit of a beating with an opener like this. You don't go for a creep tumor as quickly in the natural. So the creep will be pushed back a bit further. Okay. Cute start right there. Had a lot of potential. But in the end, I actually think it favors Clem. Just ever so slightly. Ah. You gotta take into account the lost mining time as well. And the fact that Clem decided to go for such a quick third command center. For the moment, at least, his supply count is inferior to Serral's. But now he's gonna get value out of that, uh, out of that orbital. So in the next two minutes, we'll have to kind of judge the opener by like the six minute mark. Uh, but in the next couple of minutes... Clem is gonna get value out of the third CC and it will pay for itself here very soon. Okay. Stimpak once again. Starport once again as well. 2 1 1 opener here. But with a little bit of variety, Serral will scout it, so he will see what he's playing against. But look at the lack of creep threat, right? This creep threat is not very inspiring at all. 
Well, I don't think you guys want to be going too far off creep. That's a bit dangerous. Um... So in game one, we had a similar opener to this. I mean, not quite similar, but... Okay. We had a bunch of Hellbats accompanying the Marines, right? In this case, that is not going to be happening. But Serral is skipping the Bailing Nest. Instead, he's gone straight into 1-on-1 -on upgrades. He will be going into a Bailing Nest here momentarily, I believe. But this is a pretty greedy opener from the Zerg. He's even going to go for a fourth hatch. So his plan to defend this Marine push is just with Zerglings and Queens. So Zerglings and Queens are going to be the only units he will have. Against straight Marine Medivac, he's going to be okay. And that's what he's playing against. But this could be a big problem if there were also a bunch of Hellbats mixed in. Lair coming up, Bailing Nest coming up. This, of course, does allow Serral to finish up those upgrades a little bit quicker. By the way, we're now, yeah, approaching the moment where I think that Command Center has paid for itself, and supply count is uh, looking pretty good here for Clem. Okay. Getting a couple queens. Forced to pick up, get on out of there. Careful. Ooh, don't stop flying. <laughs> if you only right-clicked it uh, far away enough to get out of range, uh, out of range of the queens there for a bit, that could have been dangerous. Zorklings right-clicked on top of the medevac, but yeah, they realize that there are going to be additional marines on the back of this too. Has Clem seen that base in the top right? He has not. And that's rough. Not having seen that expansion in the top right is really tricky. He probably assumes it's over here instead. Lovely little bit of spring cleaning here, though, by the Terran player. Making sure that this creep is gone. We really need to see some creep tumors over here, yeah. Make sure that that creep does not disappear all the way back towards that previous tumor. Terran finishing up combat shields here. 1-1 one, one about, I want to say, 40% of the way done. And Clem is going to once more just go for his normal build. Um, he's gonna go for a second factory right now. We're calling, uh, yeah, we're only going up to five barracks here. I'm assuming there will be a, th uh, a fourth command center here. Yeah, okay, a fourth command center very soon. That was kind of the thing that was throwing me off a little bit there. Because the fourth CC wasn't there yet, but he also didn't add on a whole lot of extra barracks. So he is ready to play a macro game once again. Seraldo started up 2-2 already, and this is the real advantage. He's gonna have about a minute worth of advantages. On 1-1 one, one finishing as well as 2-2 two, two finishing, which is big. So he could jump on this Terran army right now and have two upgrades on his Zerklings and Banelings that the Terran won't have yet. Alternatively, we can go for a full-on counterattack because Terran apparently is trying to tuck away his Siege Tanks in clever positions. This is a good move right here from the finisher. Yeah. Those SCVs are taking a lot of damage. And honestly, I don't think they're out of the waters just yet. Oh no, the gates have closed. I'm sorry, buddy. The portcullis in Terran main just dropped. Siege tank push over here, trying to get some work done, but this looks pretty uninspiring. Darren at least has finished up his own upgrades, but Serral's coming back home. Using the queens here in the front as well to soak up a couple of those siege tank hits. You love to see it. Distracting the, uh, the, the bulk of this marine army by running around the zerklings. Sure, a lot of links go down, but a lot of the tanks, both of the tanks, that's a lot. That's a lot in my mind, okay? Uh, they have gone down. And fighting straight marine medevac is much easier than fighting uh, against a bunch of siege tanks. Now we can start going for a little bit of creep once again. Terran has evened up the supply count, or sorry, the upgrade count here momentarily. Serral probably doesn't really want to fight on, uh, yeah, unless he sees an opportunity. These upgrades are going to be big. Terran just started up plus two. Just a single plus two. Where Serral is about to finish 2-2 two -two for his links and banes already. And obviously, Lings and Banes, as well as Marines, they come out in such big numbers that there's just so many more units to benefit from those upgrades. It's a little bit different for Protals. Every single one of those Zerklings is soon gonna experience plus two armor and plus two damage. Nice movement here, though, by Clem, all things considered. Um, did he lose the fourth command center? I actually did not quite catch that. He did lose the fourth command center. <sighs> He never remade it. He starts it up right now. Okay, that's a big error. He definitely wanted to restart that a little bit quicker. I think he, he, well, he probably wanted to, but he just didn't have the resources for it. That was a full kill on the command center with that, uh, that counterattack. I may have actually had it on the screen, but I just didn't 
just didn't register for me. Alright, 2-2 is done for Zerk. I would love to see an all-out push right here for Saro. Hive is coming up as well, but he's not going to be able to maintain that lead! Oh my god, the Marines! Completely caught off guard because of this Zerkling counterattack. Another group of Lings is on top of the, well, secondary fourth base, and it also gets cancelled. Ay, ay, ay. Sarah manages to get the tempo lead for what seems to be the first time in this series. And Clem apparently has had enough. He doesn't want to keep playing this. GG is cold. Here we go. The rubber match. This series, it started off with a 2-0 lead for Clem. And Clem looked absolutely dominant. Sarah, however, once again, going for the Eric opener, it seems, has looked a lot better in game three and in game four. I mean, honestly, he looked best in game two, but Clem looked even better there. <laughs> Anyhow, Serral not necessarily just relying on his macro anymore. Instead, he's trying to play, uh, well, what we consider to be a strategy game. I know. I think in, the, in his mind, he usually just out controls and outpaces the opponents. But against Clem, that turns out to be very tricky. Taking a couple of small chances. Trying to calculate the odds of his opponent bringing Hellbats out a second time in the series. He figured, okay, probably not the case. I can go plus one, plus one before starting up any sort of tech. Be it a Roach Warren, be it a Bailing Nest, be it a Lair. Taking a bit of a chance. But it worked out for him. So, are we once again gonna make a round of Zerklings here? Is that the plan? Looks to be like he wants to go for the same build twice in a row, even though it felt to me that Clem shut it down pretty hard. And that was Clem even going for a very quick third command center as well. So there's the Reaper once again coming up. We're gonna go for an SCV scout? Okay. I don't mind that at all. Now, I don't think he's gonna be saving up nearly as many links this time around. Nope. This is just the conventional Eric. So maybe one group of Zork links, but mostly just double queens. One group of Zerklings for the counter-attack, that is. Shoot me a Marine after this Reaper as well for Terran. We'll have to see. Yep. So these, yeah, these Zerklings over here, they're gonna try and kill the SCV that's killing the, or, <laughs> that's killing. That's building the command center. But that's not going to happen. Pocket base over here. Yeah, always feels like a pocket base anyways. I guess it's not technically a pocket base, but... It always does kind of feel like one that you can quite easily acquire here as the Zerk. Then again, you don't really have a lot of good third base options. Okay, Clem realizes that. He decides, you know what? I'm gonna be sending my SUV over there once again. You're not making, uh... Yeah, you're not really making a whole lot of Zerklings. Good luck trying to make a third. Now, there is the forward third option. There's also the back third option behind that golden wall. One link still around. Third command center in the main base after the factory. Okay. Sero has not started up the... He has not started up link speed. Is Sero... What are we doing? He hasn't gone for a Roach Warren. He hasn't gone for a lair. He goes for a lair right now. In the natural though. In the natural. This is pretty easy to scout right here for the Terran. Clem may actually just see it right away. Yep. Brilliant scout right there by Clem. So there's the Roach Warren coming up. Um, <clears throat> this confuses me a little bit. <clears throat> I need water, apparently. Do I have any water? Mm. I've got some cold coffee. I don't know if that was ideal. <clears throat> Um, what confuses me a little bit here, wow, yeah, this looks like the Eric build. So this looks like the Eric build where you deny your opponent's base by dropping creep on it with queens. No way. Is that what Serral's doing? I don't know how it lines up against this quick triple CC opener from Clem. So I think he's gonna load queens into an overlord and then have a roach escort to... Are we gonna just queen drop the natural? Like, what exactly is the plan here? 
Because this is not a build I expected to be good at this level of play. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love Eric's strategies. They're incredibly good. But are they good enough to bring out against somebody of the caliber of Klim? This is, by the way, a little bit of a variation. This is too many roaches just for an escort. Nah, we're gonna go for a full-on push. Clem sees this coming in from a mile away. Here's the Ovi. Three queens loaded into it. I am so surprised to see this. This is game number five of a best of five series of a premier StarCraft 2 tournament. There's money on the line here. A sub oh my god, he just made two more overlords. <gasps> no way. Serral taking a page out of uh, Eric, Bly, whoever you want to talk about. Stimpak is going to finish up, though. Are we just going to try and pop low HP Roaches into the Overlords? Like... <laughs> no, I think he's just given up. Yeah, no, he, he's looked at his army and he realizes this isn't going to happen. This is so funny, though. Oh, oh, yeah, get him! Hey, lovely play right there by Clem, using the splash damage. One Marine right there ended up uh, taking the price, but that's okay. He couldn't see the creep tumor anymore because it was burrowed. But here we go, look at that! Third base is gonna get the knight. I can't believe Sarah was bringing this out. After being 2-0 behind. He's now transitioning towards uh, the sledgehammer. At least that's what it feels like whenever you play against it. This is a classic Zerg timing. This is the build every Zerg player knows. Plus one, plus one with Roach speed. This build is amazing if you feel like the opponent has messed up. So if you think, okay, you know what? My opponent has not been playing a very clean game. I can take advantage of him. I am gonna just go for a really big attack as soon as this upgrade's finished. Alternatively, this could be... Really? Are we just gonna start spreading creep all over the place? Okay. Alternatively, he could be droning up the fourth base and just use this as a stepping stone to go straight towards, like, I don't know, lurkers or something like that. Clem, in the meantime, going into 1-1 one -one upgrades. And playing a lot more conservatively than we normally see him play. Look at him. He, he's... You can almost see him scratching his head here. He's like, what? There's cre creep. Uh, cre creep. Uh, creep. What do I do? Uh, creep. I think you want to get a Raven, man. I actually genuinely think against this uh, against this particular build, you should be getting at least one Raven. Um, the main reason is just because there's going to be pockets of creep everywhere, and if you plan on scanning everything, you really need like four or maybe even five orbital commands. And he's not going to get any of that anytime soon. A little bit of a roach drop over here on the left side of the map. <laughs> <laughs> little pockets of creep. Sarah has started a little creep shop over here. You can go out and uh, get yourself a scoop of creep. <laughs> Amazing. Roach drop in the main base, though. That's gonna be annoying. Yeah, so this is not the sledgehammer. It is gonna be a, a hive together with a lurker den. Okay. Queen drop. Queen drop in the natural of the Terran. Wow. Simultaneously, there's a roach drop in the opponent's main base. Serral suddenly switching up his entire game plan. And honestly, game 3 4, but in especially game number 5. The opponent is not ready for lurkers. Clem is by no means ready for Lurkers here. Lurkers and Vipers are gonna be hitting the battlefield very soon. Now, I'm interested to see, is he gonna wait until those upgrades are done? Because he's just invested into 2-2 two, two together with the Lurker upgrade. Um, a Marine Marauder push is gonna get shut down hard. Just by a handful of Lurkers and Vipers. Yeah, he needs to get a couple of them. This is a scary position, though, for the Terran player. Once again, look at the Queen drop. Queen drop in the main base, Road drop. Uh, sorry, Queen Drop in the natural, Roach Drop in the main. We had a couple of Roaches over here, too. Ten SCVs have gone down. 
Clem is like, oh, oui, oui, uh, sacre bleu, uh, c'est du uh, roach in the, in the main base, the, le queen, le, le roi. No, that's king, I think. Anyways, uh, <laughs> in the natural expansion. Okay, abduction, yoink. Okay, is there enough though for the Zerg? This cold cave right here for the Terran is absolutely amazing. Clem trying to make a final stand in this game. And even though the man was 2-0 behind, it's Serral who completes the reverse sweep and who obtains the victory. That was amazing. If you enjoyed watching this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. It really does help. Also, if you enjoy watching these videos, I try to post new high-level StarCraft 2. Maybe not quite this high-level, because this series is amazing, but I try to post new videos pretty much every single day, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon, so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.